Hey friends, Kim from stampingimperfection.com. I'm so happy you're joining me today. I have a quick video I want to share with you about tips for maintaining your blending tools and a couple of blending tips that might you might find helpful. So I shared a video a while ago that I have three different kinds of inks. Catherine Pooler, Altenew, and Distress Oxides. I love these inks. These are the three... Um, sets of inks I have. I also purchased the Tailored Expressions blending brushes. I just thought they were so pretty. I went ahead and ordered the extra little turnstile and the extra little scrubby thing that comes with them and I'm very happy with them. They were very expensive. Like this was a lot of money out of my crafty budget. So um, I the principle is that you use the blue brush for all your blue shades of inks and so forth. And that's okay, but it wasn't okay for me to use them for all three brands of ink pad that I have. Because those uh, Catherine Pooler and Altenew inks are not made the same way that the Distress Oxide inks. If you look at the back of the ink pads, it will tell you what they're made of. So it turns out that the Altenew and Catherine Pooler inks are dye-based inks. Like they are water reactive inks. They have special properties. They're wonderful. They clean up easily with water. Um, you can do a lot of techniques with water with these inks. So they're a lot of fun to play with. You can do those same techniques with the oxides. It's just that those oxide inks aren't just dye inks. Those oxide inks also have pigment in them. And it's not okay to use the same brushes with inks that have pigments and inks that have dyes. So you need to use different brushes or foams or whatever blending tools you choose to use with your oxide inks than you do with your dye inks. So what I did was I took those blending brushes and I cleaned them. I um, put some Dawn dish soap in the palm of my hand and then I just scrubbed the brushes until they got really foamy and then I ran them underwater and I kept scrubbing them in my hand until all the dye and the suds all came out. Just clear water was running out and they all came out really white. Like it cleaned them off beautifully. The instructions that came with the blending brushes said that you can use mild soap and water and then to dry them so that the brushes face down, but I didn't want to lay them down. So I just, you know, propped them in the that little turnstile overnight. When I came back the next morning, there was still a lot of color in them. I don't know where the color came from. Um, obviously way back deep in the brush, but um, they work beautifully now. So I'm going to save those brushes just for my Distress Oxides. Um, so if you have been using Distress inks for a long time, and Distress Oxides, you probably knew that or thought about it. Um, I just didn't think about it. I knew better. I knew that, that one was a dye, that Altenew and Catherine Puller were dye inks, and that the Distress Oxides were dye and pigment inks. I just didn't think about the fact that the, that pigment might actually clog up my brushes or something, um, because I was having trouble getting them clean. And uh, it, like I was really getting a lot of contamination and I couldn't get them clean and I wasn't happy with, um, you know, the crossover I was getting. Now the inks, the Distress inks are dye inks and you could use the same brushes for those Distress inks as your other dye inks, but you can't use the same brushes or blender foams for your oxides because your oxides have the pigments in them. And on the back of your ink pad, it will tell you whether they have... Um, pigment or dye and if they are hybrid inks they have pigment in them so you should keep your foams and brushes separate for your hybrids and your pigments versus your dye inks so I decided that I would um, get I would spring for some new brushes for my dye inks so I went online to Amazon and I found these um, they're actually makeup slash craft brushes and they were uh, like $11, less less than $11. And everybody says they work just as well. They do work just as well as the expensive brushes. Honestly, they do. And I picked this particular set because I liked that they had the pretty colored handles. The blue will be for the blue. The green will be for the green. And I will mark this particular set. 
I will label them Catherine Pooler. And then the second set that I got, I will label all to new. So I will just keep my brushes separate. So, you know, check on the back of your ink pads if it says water, um, water reactive dye based then you need a different brush because that distress oxide very clearly says dye and pigment ink fusion hybrid inks are pigment inks they have dye and pigment in them so keep your brushes separate brushes and foams it's true for foams also the second tip i have is if you're not getting blending results that you like it, it it's probably not your blending tools it's probably your paper I highly recommend using Bristol cardstock. I love this Canson Bristol cardstock. Um, I get it usually buy one, get one 50% off, or it's just plain old 50% off at Michael's um, because that's the only craft store I have near me. But it's super convenient to get one sheet will give me four card fronts. So I love it. And I wait till it's on sale and I buy several pads and then it lasts me till the next sale. So the next tip I have is to make sure that your ink pads are well inked when you go to blend. If your ink pads are kind of dry, you're not going to get a nice blend. I did a video a while ago where I was showing blending, um, trying to create hills, and I was having a terrible time um, blending, and that was because my ink pads were dry. I was using my Bristol paper, I was using my nice brushes, but I wasn't getting good results. I, I just couldn't get them to blend because my ink pads were dry. Once I re-inked them, they blended beautifully. And you don't want it to be super juicy because you'll get too much ink on your um, brush, which you can just blend off on another sheet of paper. But keep that in mind. That's just another tip. So I finished blending this out to a nice little ombre effect. So those bl brushes worked perfectly fine. I will be very happy having um, separate brushes now for my dye inks and my pigment inks. Everything will work fine. And um, if you have any tips, other tips to share below, please share them in the comments. We would love to hear them. They help everyone when you share them. So please give this video a thumbs up and uh, subscribe to my channel while you're here. Make sure you click the bell and choose all notifications so you get notifications every time I upload a video. Stop by my blog at stampingimperfection.com and sign up for my newsletter so you get a project tutorial every week or two in your email. Thank you so much for watching and have a wonderful day.